Good morning Year 4. In reading today we're going to continue reading our new book The Explorer by Catherine Rundell. Now last lesson we worked on retrieving information from a text. You looked at the front cover of the book and you made guesses and estimates of what you thought the book would be about and various other questions. Now we're going to start today by thinking do you remember anything about the book so far? So I'd like you to have a little bit of a think, have a chat if there's someone sitting next to you. What do you remember that's happened in the book so far? Are there any main characters? Has anything happened yet? If you just pause the video and have a think or a little bit of a chat please, off you go. Okay, so so far in the book we know not a lot about what's happened, but we do know that there are two main characters so far. We know we have Fred and we also have the pilot. And we have gathered so far that they were on a plane and they were going over the Amazon River. And at the moment, it looks as if the pilot, something bad has happened to him. It also looks as if something bad has happened to the plane. I want you to have a think, what are your opinions of the book so far? Do you like the book? Are you excited to read more? Have a think and a little bit of a chat, please. Okay, I hope you're all very excited to read the book because I am. I've read our chapter today and it's very, very exciting. So I hope you're as excited as I am. I'm going to introduce you to some vo uh, vocabulary that we're going to be using in today's book, um, just so you know a little bit about what it's about. The first word that might be new to you is the word here, summon. This is a verb, it's a doing word. The, the word summon means that you are making an effort to produce something. So in the story, the sentence that uses the word summon is here, and it is, he jabbed his finger into the back of his tongue to summon up spit. So it makes an effort to produce something. So this character wants to produce spit in his mouth, and you'll find out why when we read the book. We've also got down here some synonyms. Do you know what a synonym is? Excellent. A synonym is a word that is the, means the same as our word. So, for example, the synonyms of summon are to gather or to collect. Another way you could use summon is where someone is to summon up a smile. They produce a smile in their facial expression. So that's the first word you're going to come across today. The second word you're going to be coming across is singed singed this word here and this word is an adjective this means where something is slightly burnt or scorched the sentence that we are going to be using it in today in the book is the hair on his arm was singed and smelt of eggs so it means the same as scorched burnt or blackened where something is slightly burnt so that's our next word today singed our final word that you're going to be hearing today is accustomed. Accustomed is a verb and it means to become used to something. So the, the sentence that we're going to be hearing this word in today is he was being accustomed to the dark, which means the same as being familiar, regular or something is usual. So this person has got used to the dark. He has become accustomed to the dark. Now we're going to read on today. I'm going to read you the next few pages um, to the end of the next uh, this chapter and then I'm going to go through how I would like you to answer some retrieval questions. So if you just listen carefully you can follow on on the slides here and I'm going to be reading the book. So, The Green Dark. Fred, Fred wondered as he ran if he was dead but he thought death would surely be quieter. The roar of the flames and his own blood vibrated through his hands and feet. The night was black. He tried to heave in breath to shout for help as he ran, but his throat was too dry and ashy to yell. He jabbed his finger into the back of his throat to summon up spit. Is anyone there? Help! Fire! He shouted. The fire called back in response. A tree behind him sent up a fountain of flames. There was a rumble of thunder, nothing else replied. A burning branch cracked, spat red, and fell in a cascade of sparks. Fred leapt away, stumbling backwards into the dark and smacking his head against something hard. The branch landed exactly where he'd been standing seconds before. He swallowed the bile that rose in his throat and began to run again, faster and wilder. Something landed on his chin, and he ducked, smacking his face. 
but it was only a raindrop. The rain came suddenly and hard. It turned the suit and sweat on his hand to something like tar, but it began to quench the fire. Fred slowed his run to a jog, then a stop. Gasping, choking, he looked back the way that he had came. The little aeroplane was in the trees. It was smoking, sending up clouds of white and grey into the night sky. He stared around, dizzy and desperate. But he couldn't see or hear a single human, only the fern-like plants growing around his ankles and the trees reaching hundreds of feet up into the sky. And the panicked dive and shriek of birds. He shook his head, hard, trying to banish the shipwreck roar in his eyes. The hair on his arms was singed and smelt of eggs. He put his hand to his forehead. His eyebrows had charred and part of it came away on his fingers. He wiped his eyebrow on the sleeve of his shirt. Fred looked down at himself. One leg of his trousers was ripped all the way up to the pocket, but none of his bones felt broken. There was a vicious pain, though, in his back and neck and it made his arms and legs feel far off and foreign. A voice came suddenly from the dark. Who's there? Get away from us! Fred spun around. His ears still buzzing, he grabbed a rock from the ground and hurled it in the direction of the voice. He ducked behind a tree and crouched on his haunches, poised to jump or run. His heart sounded like a one-man band, he tried not to exhale. Do you think he was a bit scared at this moment, year four? He might have been. The voice said, for God's sake, don't throw things. It was a girl's voice. Fred looked out from behind a tree. The light of the moon filtered deep green to the forest floor, casting long finger shadows against the trees, and he could see only two bushes, both of them rustling. Who is it? Who's there? The voice came from the second bush. Fred squinted through the dark, feeling the remaining hair rise up on his arms. Please don't hurt us, said the bush. The accent wasn't British. It was something softer, and the voice was definitely a child's, not an adult's. Was it you throwing poo? Fred looked down at the ground. He'd snatched up a piece of years old, fossilised animal dung. Oh, he said. Yes. He was becoming accustomed to the dark and could see the shine of eyes peering out from the grey-green gloom of the undergrowth. Are you from the plain? Are you hurt? Yes, we're hurt. We fell out of the sky, said one bush, as another one said. No, not badly. You can come out, said Fred. It's only me here. The second bush parted. Fred's heart gave a great leap. Both the girl and her brother were covered in scratches and burns and ash, which had mixed with sweat and rain and made a kind of paste on their faces. But they were alive. He was not alone. You survived, he said. Obviously we did, said the first bush. But we'd be less talkative, wouldn't we? The blonde girl stepped out into the lashing rain. She stared from Fred to the other two, unsmiling. I'm Con, she said. It's short for Constantia. But if you call me that, I'll kill you. Fred glanced at the other girl. She smiled nervously and shrugged. Right, he said. If you say so, I'm Fred. I'm Lila, said the second girl. She held her brother on her hip. And this is Max. Hi. Fred tried to smile, but it made the cuts on his cheeks stretch and burn, so he stopped and made do with a grin that involved only the left half of his face. Max was at the breathless stage of crying, and he clung to his sister so tightly his fingers were pressing bruises on her skin. She was leaning over to one side to hold him up, shaking with the effort. They looked, Fred thought, like a two-headed creature, arms entwined. Is your brother badly hurt? he asked. Lila patted her brother desperately on the back. He won't talk. He's just crying. Con looked back towards the fire and shivered. The flames cast a light on her face. She was no longer blonde. Her hair was grey with soot and brown with blood, and she had a scratch on her shoulder that looked deep. Are you all right? he asked, wiping rain out of his eyes. That cut looks bad. 
No, I'm not all right, Con spat. We're lost in the Amazon jungle, and statistically speaking, it's very likely that we are going to die. I know. Fred didn't feel he needed reminding. I meant, so no. Con's voice grew thin and high. I think it would be safe to say that none of us are all right. 